Well, good evening. Welcome to each of you here tonight. We're glad to be here. It's hard to believe we're at the, the last program of this effort. And we're very glad that you're here tonight. Um, this is a delightful facility compared to where we had been before. And there's adequate room for everybody, uh, rather than having to be seated in the hallway and out the doors like we were at our previous venue, for those of you who were there. So we're grateful to be here tonight, and I'd like to just say thank you to the LMS staff for making this possible for us. Um, we appreciate that. Uh, housekeeping announcements, if you didn't see the signs coming in, please do silence your cell phones. Um, we'd appreciate if they're not going off mid-program. If you've picked up the program, I didn't bring my, mine up here, but if you look on the uh, cover of your program, you will see the name of our group is Lyrica Sacra. That's um, a new name for us. For these last few years, we've been the group without a name. And after a lot of searching, this is the name we settled on, and it means song sacred. It's perhaps reversed from the way our minds would think, but we like the concept that it conveys um, because that's our mission and what we're about is sacred music. Uh, as you see us here tonight, we're a diverse group of musicians and singers and diverse in a lot of ways. We have a good variety of instruments here. Um, we have a good variety of skill levels here uh, from fairly talented to uh, beginning level really and, and learning as we go. So we're not a professional group by any means and yet everyone up here has poured a lot of effort uh, into what you're going to hear tonight, and I think they're doing a really good job. <clears throat> There's one thing that binds all of us together up here, and, and we're here from a number of different churches and even a number of different geographical areas and states, but there's one thing that binds us together, and that is that we love the Lord very much. And so it's a joy for us to be able to use the musical gifts that God has given to do two things. One, to honor him, and that's really our supreme desire, but two, to be able to use this music as a means of conveying a spiritual truth, and that's really what we want to do tonight. I'd like to read you the um, vision statement for Lyrica Sacra. Our aim is to provide choral symphonic Christian music that is glorifying to God and edifying to men. Two, to present high quality music that effectively communicates God's message of salvation and life. And third, to develop musical abilities in aspiring conservative musicians and to provide a viable outlet for those gifts. So out of that, our desire this evening is to use this program as a means of conveying the spiritual truth that God would like to speak to us tonight so that our hearts can be drawn to himself. And out of that thought, the uh, conductors asked me to share this thought with you regarding applause. 
Um, we do humbly and gratefully acknowledge your appreciation for what we're doing here tonight. It is pleasurable in a very good way, very healthy way, very wholesome way. And we acknowledge that and we're delighted that that can be that way. But yet our ultimate mission is to go beyond that pleasure and to be able to use this music to communicate something that can draw your heart to God tonight. That's what we want to do. And we would desire that everyone that's here would leave this service in some way changed from the way we came in. So to help keep our focus there, we would prefer that you not applaud our performance, but rather we invite you to worship tonight as we sing. If you feel moved, um, shed some tears. If your heart is tenderly touched, um, we welcome an amen or a praise the Lord as we uh, go through these songs and you can feel free to express yourself in those ways. And I know that we're going to be very blessed as we participate together this evening. They're singing, they're playing, you're gonna get an opportunity to sing some as well, but you're also participating and listening. And so we're all gonna to participate together tonight in this effort. And may God be praised, may a sweet incense rise from this place as we're gathered here tonight. Again, looking at your program, you'll see the title of our program this evening is Salvation. It's a beautiful theme, and it's being conducted tonight by uh, Yuri Kravitz and Galen Reed and Jeff Swanson. The three of them will share the conducting duties. The lyrics are written in your program, um, the lyrics for every piece, and there's a powerful message in many of those, uh, there's a powerful message in all of them. Some of them come straight from scripture, as you, as you follow along, you will notice that. And I would encourage you to follow closely because again, with our desire to convey the spiritual truth, we'd like you to get the message that's in each one of these pieces of music. Music has a unique ability to communicate something to the, uh, to the soul, to the core of a person. And God has something for each one of us that's unique. Uh, I don't know why you're here, but God knows. And, and, and even though we're all here with a common humanity, yet all of us are here with unique needs. And so God would like to speak to us in unique ways, and he knows exactly what's in your heart. So you pay attention to these things and let him speak to you as he would. We're gonna have a short devotional meditation about three quarters of the way through, and otherwise we're just gonna flow from one music piece to the next. Um, and it's possible the conductors may want to say some words in between, but we'll leave that to them if they choose to do that. So we're going to open in just a moment with a standing prayer, and after that, Brother Sergei Kravitz is going to lead us in a congregational song, and then we're gonna turn our attention to the choir and the orchestra for the evening program. So if you would, all stand together with me at this time, and we'll have prayer. God, our Father, we bow our hearts in your presence here tonight. We thank you for this opportunity to be here in this place and all together in this way. Our hearts are full of anticipation. And I know the choir and the orchestra has put a lot of effort into their preparations for this final program. And I pray tonight you'd bless them in a special way and each one of the conductors as well. Would you give them skill, Lord, and give them the ability to express the things that they would desire to express tonight. And I pray you'd bless each one of us that are gathered here as listeners. Would you help us, Lord, as we participate in listening to be able to open our hearts to you and allow you to speak to us the things that you would through this program tonight. We commit this time to you. We just ask that you would be glorified as we sing and as we play, and we pray that we might be changed. So we commit this time to you in Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. I'm sorry, you're supposed to stand for the song. I was supposed to keep you standing so you can get your exercise. Please turn with me in your hymnals to number 41. Come thou almighty king, number 41. Come the Almighty King, help us thy name to sing, help us to praise, Father all glorious, all victorious, come and reign over us, ancient. 
Oh, 
We'd like you to join us on the next song, God Me O Thou Great Jehovah. And uh, the words are in your printed programs. I'm sorry, I failed to check in the hymnal where it's at, but I believe it's in the hymnal. Uh, if you want to search it out, well, you can see the music there as well. Just be careful, there is an introduction. There are some interludes in between the three verses that we'll be doing, and I'll try and lead you in that. God Me O Thou Great Jehovah. God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, I trust you've been blessed thus far this evening. I have been. And I've listened to these songs a number of times, but they just get better and more precious each time. Salvation. What a beautiful theme. What a beautiful concept. And I've loved a number of these pieces and the way they pull directly from Scripture in bringing us the message. You know, that one song that we sang um, was right out of John 3.16, which is the most familiar verse in the Bible. Uh, probably for nearly everyone around the world. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son 
that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And that is perhaps the most powerful verse in the Bible as well because of the message that it contains and the beauty of the, the picture of God reaching down to humankind who need his salvation. And I love the graphic that's on the front of your program. I always appreciate the effort that's put into making those graphics because they communicate a message just like the music communicates a message. And when you have that beautiful picture of a large, strong hand that's taking hold of a smaller, weaker hand and pulling it up, I love the picture that that gives of God's salvation. And I think that's a good graphic of John 3.16. I often ponder the story of Peter when he was walking on the water, when I think about this matter of God's salvation. And you know that story. Most of you are probably familiar with it. But it's found in Matthew chapter 14. And Peter was with the rest of the disciples after a hard day of ministry, and they had gone out to cross the sea, and Jesus was walking on the water. The water was, the sea was tempestuous, and they saw this as it was a spirit walking on the water. And it says they were afraid, which I think is reasonable. If any of us would have been there, we probably would have felt the same way. And then Jesus spoke to them through the, the mist, through the, the haze, and the difficult vision, and he said, it's I, be not afraid. And on hearing that, that voice, I think it spoke immediate peace to their hearts. But Peter, ever the impetuous one, Peter, ever the bold one, Peter, ever the forward one, his immediate response was, Lord, if it's you, bid me come to you on the water. I like that response because it's one that I can relate to. And Jesus said, sure, come. So he steps out of the boat and is walking on the water and then he saw the waves then he felt the wind now it had been blowing all along the waves were there all along and if any of you have ever been out in a small boat on rough water in the ocean it looks a whole lot different when you're out in it than it does when you're standing on shore you know those waves are beautiful and even when the sea is tempestuous and the waves are high and boisterous it's beautiful when you're standing at a distance and watching it but when you're out there in it and the waves are rising higher than what you can see and you're going up and going down, it is scary. Nothing had changed for Peter from the moment he stepped out of the boat until the moment when, he, when his heart suddenly became afraid except his perspective of the situation. All of a sudden, the optimism that he had felt on walking to Jesus disappeared as he began to be afraid of the wind and the waves. And then he started to sink. And as he, went, as he went down, great fear gripped his heart. Terror, I believe. I have no doubt he thought he was going to perish. And then those beautiful words that came out of Peter's mouth as he looked up. And I'd like you to just think about how this worked in Peter's life. As he looked up, and in sheer terror, he said, Lord, save me. And then it says that Jesus reached down his hand and lifted Peter up out of the waves. And they went into the ship together and the wind and the waves ceased. But what I'd like to, us to think about tonight is this, this concept of salvation, this understanding of what Jesus wants to do for each one of us. And you know, we often think of salvation in terms of the new birth, and that's a right perspective. The, um, many of the hymns that we were singing tonight uh, spoke of that, but the, perhaps the one that, was, that, that is, was most that way, for me at least tonight, is that the one and the peace and can it be that I should gain. I just love the triumphant um, story that's in that song from beginning to end, and I hope you soak that up because it's the picture of the new birth and of a soul that is finding freedom in Jesus Christ. And can it be that I should gain the mystery of that, an interest in the Savior's blood, 
Died he for me who caused his pain, for me who him to death pursued. Long my imprisoned spirit lay. Those of you who are here tonight and are born again can remember that time before you knew him. That time when your, your, your spirit lay imprisoned. Fast bound in sin and nature's night. But thine eye diffused a quickening ray. I woke and the dungeon flamed with light. Do you remember that moment? I do. And I remember how different the world looked in the next morning. Because something very precious had happened in my heart. And I was a young man when that experience took place in my life. But it forever changed the course of my life. And I know tonight for each one of you that are here, whether you have experienced that transformative meeting with the Lord Jesus, or whether it's something you're only hearing about, it will be the most important thing that will ever happen to you. My chains fell off. My heart was free. And I rose, went forth, and followed thee. And I love that last verse. No condemnation, now I dread. Jesus and all in him is mine. Alive in him, my living head and clothed in righteousness divine. Bold, I can approach the eternal throne and claim the crown through Christ my own. If that was the only message that we could convey here tonight, it would be well worth it. What Jesus offers to each one of us in salvation through the new birth is the most important offering that any man can ever find. But it's very exciting to me that it doesn't stop there. You know, as you think about Peter and his journey there and his experience on the water, Peter was a disciple. Peter had walked with Jesus. Peter believed in him. Peter loved him. And that's precisely what made Peter so anxious to get out of the boat and walk in the water to come to him. We can find ourselves like Peter. We've been born again. We know Jesus. We know what it means to walk with him. We know what it means to have fellowship with him. We know what it means to have that freedom in our spirit. The chains are gone. Our heart is free. We know what it means. And yet we can have those times when we see the wind and we see the waves and we begin to sink. It's exciting to me that Jesus continues to offer his salvation. And I'd just like to, each one of us tonight, I'd like to encourage us to make this personal. This is a personal salvation. You know, we're talking about something here that in theological terms is deep, very, very deep. And many of these pieces that we're singing tonight have tremendous, tremendously deep theology in them. But it's not just some far up spiritual idea. This is personal for each one of us. And the fact that Jesus reaches his hand down when, we, when we're willing to cry out, Lord, save me. And sometimes, perhaps, in mortal terror. But there was another piece that they sang tonight, that one, um, Elijah's Selections. It's a more difficult piece, and I am blessed with how much effort they've put into mastering the music on that piece. But every time I hear it, it blesses my heart more. If you would open your programs to that one, I want you to look at those words. And I love the sequence with which the piece moves through the encouragement to each one of us, and this is an encouragement to those who know him, cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to fall, he's at thy right hand. Thy mercy, Lord, is great and far above the heavens. Let none be made ashamed that wait upon thee. Those are all verses right out of the Psalms. We know those things. But the last portion of this selection really impresses me continuously. I'm going to jump to the last, uh, very last verse there. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might even come before his presence. And then the promise, if with all your hearts ye truly seek me, ye shall ever surely find me. Did you pay attention 
as the music was conveying that message tonight, the, 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 the plaintive, uh, inquiring, almost hopeless feel of the music. Oh that, I might knew, oh, that I knew where I might find him. And I just wonder tonight, have you ever felt that way? In your spiritual life, a time that just seemed like God was far away. Maybe difficulties were pressing in on you from all sides. Oh, that I knew where I might find him, that I might even come before his presence. Do you know that in those times, God is just as close as he was to Peter that day, walking out on the water? He's waiting for us. If with all your hearts ye truly seek me, ye shall ever surely find me. And I have to say in my own life, I have found that so true so many times. And I'd just like to encourage you tonight. Salvation is not just a, 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 an experience that you find in the new birth. Salvation is an ongoing walk. It's an ongoing thing that God will do in our lives continuously as we are willing to yield ourselves to him and open our hearts to him and allow him to lift us up. We turn our face to him and say, Lord, save me. And then, if you noticed in their singing and playing of that piece, it came back around again to the promises, to the admonishments and the promises. Cast your burden upon the Lord and he shall sustain thee. He will never suffer the righteous to fall. And I love the sequence of those things because you, those, those desert times that we can go through in our spiritual life, those difficult times, those times when, when we sometimes feel hopeless, and you know, Satan wants to discourage us, the enemy of our souls wants to discourage us and make us give up. But those are the times for us to press through. Those are the times for us to hang on. Those are the times for us to, with all our hearts, truly seek him and we will find him. Just blessed with those thoughts. <clears throat> you know, if you follow the story of Jesus throughout the Gospels, just, just sometime read the Gospels. You can find it in the Gospel of John, but you can find it in any of the Gospels. Just sometimes read the story of Jesus just to get a picture of how Jesus lived, the way he moved, the way he related to people, the things that he said, and you will find Jesus lived a very winsome life. People could not resist his presence. He had a large following wherever he went. And it wasn't just all people who liked him. Even those who didn't like him, even those who were threatened by his presence couldn't seem to stay away, nor could they resist the things that he spoke. There was something about Jesus in the way that he brought his message to them. And tonight, I'm challenged with the invitation that he gives to us, and they sang that for us this evening also, but out of Matthew 11. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. That Jesus calls us to him. Come to me, take my yoke, follow me, learn of me, walk with me, and you'll find rest. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Tonight, my dear friends, salvation is real. Salvation is personal. Salvation is ongoing. And as we turn our faces to him, as we lift our hands to him and let him get a hold of us and lift us up, you know what he will do? He will transform our life into something that can communicate his glory to the world about us. And it's desperately needed today. Let's each one do that. Let's reach up our hand and take his. He will save us, he will help us, he will lead us, he will keep us, and he will never forsake us. So think about that as you leave this place tonight. We have a few more numbers yet to sing, and there's a beautiful message in each one, the very next one, lead kindly light. I love the thoughts that are there. But I'd like to just challenge all of us to, to make the prayer of our last peace tonight. We would see Jesus Let's make that the prayer of each one of our hearts as we go out of this place. There's a beautiful, beautiful message there. We would see Jesus for the shadows lengthen. Many, many ways we could relate to that in our lives. 
we would see Jesus, our weak faith, to strengthen for the last weariness and the final strife. I don't know where you are tonight, but the face of Jesus calls you and will strengthen you. We would see Jesus, the great rock foundation, where on our feet we're set by sovereign grace. Nor life, nor death, with all their agitation, can thence remove us if we see his face. We would see Jesus. This is all we're needing. Strength, joy, and willingness come with the sight. We would see Jesus dying, risen, pleading, and then welcome day and farewell mortal night. Someday, this is all going to be past us. There's life, it's challenges, it's trials, it's temptations, it's struggles, it's sin, it's suffering, it's death. It's all going to be behind. We would see Jesus. Carry that message home with you tonight. We'll let them finish their last three pieces, and then we'll come back for some closing announcements and a prayer.
Well, <clears throat> that concludes our program this evening. I trust you've been blessed. And I pray that you can take these things with you to go out from this place. Hopefully something has touched your heart here tonight, but I know many times you can have songs that go through your mind and just keep going through your mind. Hope a few of these can be that for us this week. May it bless you and continue to bless you as you go forth from here. Just a note about the um, donation boxes you may have seen when you came in. There are donation boxes at each of the doors. We did not pass an offering tonight, as you noticed. Um, but there are expenses to an endeavor like this. We're all volunteers up here, and we do this because we enjoy doing this. Um, but there's expenses for the building and expenses for the music programs. And I think, from what I was told uh, as of the beginning of this evening at least, we still have a significant shortfall for this program. So if there are any of you here that would like to help contribute to that, please use those donation boxes that are at each of the exits, and you can just put whatever in there you would desire to. If there's anyone here that would like to write a check, um, and if you'd like to get a tax-deductible receipt, you can do that. We have this um, music ministry as an outreach of our church, so you, if you want to do that, you should make your check to Shalom Bible Fellowship, and that Shalom, just like that song they sang, O say Shalom, Shalom Bible Fellowship, and as long as your address is on the check, we'll follow up and make sure you get a receipt. And if any of you have any questions about that or would like to perhaps discuss uh, ongoing support for this, please come see one of us uh, after, the, uh, after the service is over here. So I think that's it. Is there anything else, um, Yuri? I'd just like to, to, to thank you as a choir and the directors. You're not all up here, but, um, but thank you for the time and effort you put into this. I have watched the hours that you've spent here, and I know you do it because you love to do it, but I just want to thank you for that effort that you've put in. And thank you to each one of you for coming tonight and uh, being willing to support us by listening. So may God bless you very richly. I've asked my fellow pastor, uh, Brother John Slaymaker, if he would have the closing prayer for us. So we're going to stand together, and he can come up here and make any comments he cares to make and lead us in prayer. And after the prayer, we'll be dismissed. You can stand. It was definitely a blessing being here this evening. I am very grateful that we have salvation in Jesus Christ. The thing that stood out to me too is Jesus did not come to emphasize a religion. He came out to emphasize a relationship with him. And that's the desire that I sense this evening that everyone here in this group up here would like that everyone out there would have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Let us bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, we humbly bow before thy presence again. We thank you, Father, for this time that we have to worship you. We pray that you might bless each one in this room, in this auditorium. We ask that as thy word went forth, we know that it will not return void, but we pray that as it, is, it was presented in song, that it will penetrate our lives and that our, our memory of these songs will, will be reflected in our lives. Now we pray that you might bless each one as we depart from this place and help us to remember that you are King of kings and Lord of lords. We ask these favors and blessings in Jesus' precious name. Amen.